All right. Good morning, everyone. I am Ryan Taft, co-founder and CEO at StorySoft, and welcome to the win in 2022 with digital storytelling, personalization, and first-party data webinar. Uh, this is the first webinar that we are putting on. Uh, we're hoping to do many more of these. Uh, but we tried to really make this uh, practical use of your time. We know how, uh, how busy you all are. So hopefully there are a lot of nuggets uh, and ideas that come out of this discussion, which you can then you know, take back to your teams as we're all moving into business planning for 2022. So with that, uh, we have a lot to cover here today. And so I'm just going to get started. Quick introduction. So uh, I've spent 15 years in the pharmaceutical industry agency side. Um, I've always been uh, interested in the power of storytelling and super interested in data and technology. And so throughout my career, I've always found myself working on projects that combine all three of those elements to create unique digital experiences for customers. Uh, a couple of years ago, myself and a few partners, uh, we spotted a gap in the marketplace and we started StorySoft and we created the first digital storytelling platform for the life sciences industry. Um, so that's a little bit of a background uh, on myself. Uh, in terms of our agenda today, uh, we're gonna quickly talk about the current environment and why it's so critical uh, that we cover these three topics here today. And then we're going to jump into each of those topics. So we're going to hit digital storytelling, personalization, and first-party data. At the, in the back half of the presentation, we're going to spend a couple of minutes going through the StorySoft solution uh, because it does combine all three of those elements into a single solution for life sciences. And then we'll close it out by answering any questions that you might have. Um, within the Zoom application, you should be able to submit your questions as we go. Um, and then at the end of the, the conversation, I'll simply go through those questions um, and answer them for you all. So with that, let's jump into the current environment. So why this webinar? Why now? And it's very simple. It's time. If COVID has taught us anything is that old models are dying. Rep access is plummeting. Physicians are on autopilot. Patients are ignoring our ads. And so marketers need scalable solutions that break through the clutter and drive growth. And so we're gonna talk about some of the, those solutions that you can implement for your brand um, over the course of the next year in storytelling, personalization, and first party data. We're gonna start with digital storytelling. And what I'd like to do is quickly share a poll question and get your responses to that. And then we'll share the responses with the audience. So I'm gonna launch this polling question. Hopefully you can see the question and uh, go ahead and fill in your responses. We'll just take a couple of seconds and uh, then I'll share the results with everyone. All right, beautiful. So we are, appreciate you guys taking the time to fill that out. We're gonna share back the results. Hopefully you can, you can see that. A large portion of you are using emotion in your messages. You're using storytelling, which is great. I mean, I think this se session is really going to um, resonate with you all. Hopefully bring to life some new concepts and ideas as well uh, that you can take back with, uh, with you for, for business planning. So I'm gonna stop sharing those results. And we're gonna jump right into the content here. So why storytelling? It's because stories are the most powerful marketing tool that you can deploy. 92% of consumers want brands to make ads that feel like a story. 95% of purchase decisions, 95% of purchase decisions are driven by emotion. Not logic, not reason, not data or facts, emotion. That's what's driving our behavior. 
And stories can be up to 22 times more memorable than facts. When we're spending time developing our tactics, well, what do we want? We want people to remember our messages and stories can help us do that. So you may be asking, why is storytelling so powerful? It's because we are hardwired for stories. There's been studies done that show the chemical reactions that take place within our brains when we are consuming stories. We're releasing hormones and those hormones are triggering the emotional response that we have when we're consuming stories. And that emotional response is driving our behavior. And the best part about it is that brands can trigger these emotions as well through their stories. If you want people to feel more generous, trusting, and bonded to your brand, help audience feel empathy for the characters in your story. That will release oxytocin within the minds of your audience. If you want people to feel more creative, relaxed, and focused, make people laugh which will trigger endorphins. If you wanna motivate people and help them to remember those messages, build suspense and then pay it off with your product as the hero, which will trigger the release of dopamine. And the release of these hormones within our minds will help to capture and hold the audience's attention, help them remember the messages and ultimately drive action. There is a fantastic TED talk that goes really deep into the magical science, the neuroscience behind storytelling. And I highly recommend if you have your phone in front of you, uh, open up your camera app, scan this QR code. It should open up a link to this YouTube video. It's about 16 minutes long. Um, so we're not gonna share it here during the call, but highly, highly recommend that you take a moment later tonight or later this week uh, to watch that video, maybe share it with you know, some of your colleagues, uh, really, really does a great job of, of pulling through the chemical reactions that stories trigger within the minds of an audience. Uh, when people study storytelling, what they realize is that storytelling predates human languages. They've, people have studied cave paintings all around the world, and the conclusions that they've come to is it's the earliest form of storytelling. Uh, stories are how we make sense of the world and our role in it. If you think about it, we're telling stories every single day. Think about the responses that you give when people say, how was vacation? How was your day? Why were you late? The response usually is a story. And now storytelling has gone digital. We are fascinated with telling our own stories. And over the last few years, uh, we've seen a prevalence of new technologies coming to market to allow consumers to tell their stories. Instagram stories, Facebook stories. Um, and there's been an explosion of people leveraging these platforms. But the real challenge for brands is that these stories were built for consumers. And they were not uh, built specifically for brands. They were modified to allow brands to leverage those platforms. So they are missing a lot of the key ingredients that we're going to need from here on out to really tell breakthrough digital stories. So when you think about digital storytelling, it's really just the enablement of storytelling through technology. And so what we want to talk about next is digital storytelling for the pharmaceutical industry. And what we believe is that there's going to be an explosion of new solutions that are not built with the consumer in mind, but built specifically for pharma marketers. You know, StorySoft was the first, but we, we believe that there's going to be a number of new solutions to start hitting the market over the coming years. And as you start to evaluate those solutions, um, you need to understand the key ingredients that you should be looking for to know if those solutions are going to work for you and enable you to take your digital storytelling to the next level. And so what we want to do is talk about a couple of those key ingredients right now. Uh, you need to be able to deliver personalized content. 
these platforms need to allow you to push out emotion evoking messages that are relevant to each and every customer. There has to be mechanisms in place so that we can stay compliant. So there has to be a feature set that allows you to share things like your ISI, PI, study design, references. That needs to be built in. Another big component is engagement. You need to have the tools available to you to create interactivity within these experiences to really get people involved and immersed in your brand. And then ultimately, there should be analytics that are built in so that you can understand the customer behavior as they're going through your content. And it would be even better if you're able to do that at the first party customer level, uh, which we're gonna get into a little bit later on in the, in the talk. If you can find solutions that incorporate all of these key ingredients, you are gonna be able to deliver breakthrough digital stories to HCPs and patients at scale. So now that we've covered um, a lot about what the digital storytelling is, the ingredients that make it up, we want to, again, we want to get back to that practical uh, nature of the conversation so that we, you know, you can walk away with something uh, when you go into brand planning. And what better way to uh, bring practicality into the conversation around storytelling than looking at one of the most famous storytellers of our time in Alfred Hitchcock. So Hitchcock knew that the primary payoff for uh, moviegoers when watching one of his movies was emotion. And so he would constantly push his teams when they were writing scripts. And he would ask them, does the shot sell? Does the shot sell? And what he meant by that is, is the effect so amazing that the audience becomes immersed and buys in completely to what they are experiencing. And the way he did that was, it was simple uh, and beautiful. He just created two scripts for every single movie that he did. He had a blue script, which was your standard script. It included the actor's line, stage directions and scene details. But then he coupled that with a green script which outlined the emotion that he wanted his audiences to feel at every moment within that movie. And you can bring Hitchcock's process to your brand. The next time you're working on a new project with your agency, you know, think storytelling first, think about Hitchcock. And when they present to you your project brief on the tactic, you know, push them to think about Hitchcock's blue script and green script and have them outline the story that they're telling and the emotional response that they want audiences to feel as that audience moves through your tactic and then tie that in to the behavior that you want to drive that's you know, triggered by that specific emotion. So hopefully um, by implementing this simple process, uh, you, can, you can make sure that all of your tactics moving forward uh, are considering storytelling and adding that emotional layer um, for your audience. So with that, uh, this is going to conclude part one of the conversation. You know, we talked a little bit about uh, why storytelling, why it's so powerful, uh, the evolution of digital storytelling, and then how to make it practical for your brand on the next project you work with. Um, and so now what we'll do is we will move on to part two of our presentation, which is all about personalization. Um, just like part one, what I'd like to do is just share a quick polling question with you and get your feedback. Perfect, so I'm gonna share results. Overwhelming, 100%, we believe that personalization leads to higher customer engagement, which is great. Um, and so we're gonna go through uh, this section and talk a little bit about why that is and how you can implement it within an organization like yours.
So where we want to start is why, right? Why personalization? And it's because it gives audiences what they want. I for Pharma recently did a survey of 2,600 HCPs and 74% of them want information relevant to their practice and their patients. On the consumer side, 90% of consumers are willing to share personal behavioral data with companies as long as that leads to better experiences for themselves. And what we're seeing is 41% higher click rates on personalized experiences. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the two types of personal personalization that you can implement uh, within your organization. The first is data-driven. So data-driven personalization, it pulls through customer level data to drive variable content. Um, the biggest key for, for data-driven personalization is that you need to integrate with your backend database. So I know a lot of you uh, either have omni-channel teams or you're, you're creating omni-channel teams and those teams are gonna be responsible you know, for managing your database and trying to make sure all the touch points are collecting data and porting that back into your database. So what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna to work together with them to integrate the solutions that you're using so that you can pull through the data that you're collecting and use that to drive those dynamic experiences. You know, um, a, a great example of this, uh, but it's a basic example. We, we're gonna wanna let, you know, level this up as we move forward, but it's how we personalize the salutation of an email. Dear Dr. Smith versus Dear Dr. Jones. So what we're doing is simply pulling that last name variable through from our database, injecting it into the email and sending out the email so that when each physician opens it up, it's personalized to them. But the beauty of the future of personalization is that you can leverage that same um, process whereby you can pull data through and then use that to personalize digital experiences as opposed to just a basic email. And you can use any sort of data that you have on your customer. So you're, you can pull through data like name or specialty, or maybe you wanna personalize the content that people are seeing based on where they're located in the country. And then another really great one that I love is recent brand interactions. If we know Dr. Smith recently talked to a rep and because that rep entered that information into Viva and that got back to our omnichannel database, we can now deliver Dr. Smith a personalized experience that talks about or continues the conversation that she just had with that representative. So that's data-driven personalization. I think it's probably one that you're familiar with, but the key here is that we wanna take it to the next level, move it outside of email and into digital experiences. The second type of personalization is action-based. Action-based personalization is the real-time swapping of content based on a user's behavior. So the best part about this is it does not require that, um, that integration with your backend database. It actually happens real time within the experience itself. Um, and so you can do this in a couple of different ways. Maybe you have a survey question and there's answer A and B. Obviously somebody answers A, they see one message. If they answer B, they see another. So that's fairly basic. But you could also tie this into different engagement elements that you might have. Maybe you have some gaming elements in your, in your experiences. Maybe you have sliders or different interactivity. And you can share one message with the people who engage with those components and another message for people who ignore those components. And finally, duration. Maybe somebody is spending a minute, two minutes in one of your experiences, and therefore you want to post and display a very specific message because by them being there that long, they're indicating that they're interested in the topic. So maybe you have an upcoming speaker event that's tied to the topic that they're, that they're um, interested in and they're going through the experience of. You can pop up a message that invites them to attend the speaker event because they're spending a lot of time. Whereas somebody who's in and out in 30 seconds, maybe you never show that, you know, that piece of content. So there are things that you can do within these digital experiences um, to, to dynamically change future content in a story based on the actions that people are taking um, you know, within that experience. So the next thing that I want to talk a little bit about, and it's really the key to uh, making all of this successful, which is the importance of having an integrated team when it comes to execution. 
So, you know, great personalization, it really, really requires strong partnerships, you know, across a lot of different roles within your organization. And so I want to kind of map out some of those roles so that you know who to pull in uh, the next time you want to launch a personalized um, marketing campaign. Obviously, it's driven by you all, the marketers, in conjunction with your agency partners. As I mentioned, I know a lot of folks are investing in omni-channel right now. So if you have an omni-channel team or a multi-channel team, you want to bring those folks in. Potentially, you know, these, uh, these experiences might be distributed through your sales team, or you might be taking data that you collect from these experiences, and you might be porting it back to your sales team so they can use it when they have um, the next conversation. And if that's the case, you want to make sure you pull in sales leadership so that you get that pull through uh, when you go to launch. Obviously, if sales is involved, you want to make sure operations and training is also involved. Uh, critical, critical teams to make sure are involved are your IT and data teams. Now, this might be multiple teams within your organization, might be a single team, but especially if you're using uh, data-driven personalization and you need to make that integration between your solution and your database, you want to make sure that you're bringing in your IT and your data teams so they can help you with those integrations. Analytics. So if you're collecting data you know, from these experiences, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you, again, your data team has a way to pull that data back into your database, and then your analytics team can use that to create reports so that you can understand what's working and what's not. And then finally, MLR. As we all know, uh, it's better to get MLR involved early uh, so that they can understand the concept, they can understand how you're going to be submitting materials, um, and they can make sure they give you the guidance and the bumpers that you're going to need to consider to make sure that what you're creating is approvable. So these are the core teams. And some, you know, you may need some of these or you may need all of these, again, depending on the tactic that you're creating. But I can guarantee you that it will not work or it will not efficiently move through your organization, the project, if you do not have a point person that's helping to direct everything, who's involved in the entire process, we call that person the glue. And they're an individual who's gonna make sure that the right people are in, in each meeting. They're gonna make sure that coming out of that meeting that notes and updates are distributed to, for the full, to the full team so that when people come back together, everybody's on the same page. It's a critical, critical role. Uh, we also suggest that this person at least has a basic understanding of data and technology because a lot of what you're gonna be doing when it comes to personalization um, you know, falls into that realm. I can tell you a quick story. We're working with a, a top three pharma, brand, uh, pharma company right now, uh, major brand. They're using our platform to deliver personalized digital experiences to, to HCPs. And it, it started off a little rocky. Um, we were basically cycling. We had a lot of different conversations with a lot of different silos, a lot of these teams. Um, so at one point, we actually called a timeout and we suggested that we put somebody in, into this role to become the glue. And it, everything improved dramatically. This person um, helped to make sure they steered the ship throughout the process and things really started to speed up. Um, we were actually really amazed at how fast we were moving in the completion of this project once we implemented you know, this role. So critical, critical role. If you take one thing away from this section is that you need to make sure you have a point person uh, when you're launching personalized um, experiences. So now let's get into, uh, this is the last slide in this section, the kind of the practicality, something that you can take back. Uh, we, we're all within large organizations. There's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts. And so this slide is really gonna cover a couple of key steps that you should consider um, when, when launching personalized experiences. So first you're gonna wanna get together with your agency partners. You're gonna plan out the tactic, plan out the personalization. Once you're ready, it's time to have a roll up your sleeves working session with all of the team members we just talked about. From there, it's about getting you know, a concept in front of MLR and getting their guidance. Once you get their blessing, create the materials, start with your integrations, configure your analytics, and then it's on to testing and deployment. Testing is critical when you're doing personalized experiences because there might be a lot of different combinations of content. Uh, so definitely make sure you spend the time there and then it's, it's on to launch. Um, so in terms of this section, you know, we covered off on why personalization is important, 
the different types of personalization, the roles you might need, and ultimately the process that you should be going through. Um, but I will say that um, anything that we're talking about here, especially if you're gonna be doing data-driven personalization, is not possible without customer level first party data. And that's what we're gonna get into right now. So we're gonna spend just one minute, we're gonna do another quick poll. All right, we're going to end the poll or share the results. And this is not surprising um, that, you know, basically uh, a lot of folks are saying sometimes. I'm actually maybe a little surprised that people haven't said never, which is great. Um, you know, and the reason I say that is because collecting first party data is hard. It's not, it's not easy. Again, you need to have multiple teams working together to make sure it, it happens. And so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, first party data in this section. And I wanted to start by just grounding everybody on a couple of definitions. You know, we hear first party data, second party data, third party data. So just wanted to kind of um, make sure we're all aligned. We'll start with third party data because I think, you know, that's what all of us have been using over the last, you know, 10 to 15 years. And that's data that's collected by an entity that doesn't have a direct relationship with consumers. So third party data, you know, you, you hear a lot about third party cookies, which is a tracking script um, that gets placed on people when they visit certain websites. And then media companies can track their behavior across sites. And then they can come to folks like ourselves and enable us to push out, um, you know, enable you, you all to push out personalized communications or targeted communications based on the data that they're collecting. But you may have heard over the, la the rumblings of the last few years of things like GDPR, CCPA, the California Consumer Privacy Act, uh, Apple has recently uh, updated their, their tracking identification program. And the net result of, of this is that third-party cookies are dying. Um, you know, browsers, Google Chrome, Mozilla, Safari, uh, will soon limit uh, people putting tracking cookies onto individuals without first notifying them. And so the net result of this is that we need to find other types of data that we can use to deliver those personalized experiences to our audiences. And that's why, you know, from here on out, brands need to make a really serious investment in collecting their own first party data. So let's continue with the definitions. Uh, second party data is really just data that an organization collects from its audience and then shares or sells to another company. Uh, so if you buy a list, this is an example, or if, if you're doing a co-promote and together you combine your lists and you push out um, you push out communications to the combined list that you're leveraging third or excuse me, second party data. And then first party data. So that's data that your company collects directly from your audience. And it's even better if it's at the customer level. So why collect first party data? And that's because it's the fuel of our digital future. 92% uh, of the marketers believe that using first party data continuously um, to continuously build an understanding of what people want is critical. And that came from a Google survey. And that's why 88% of marketers are saying that they are going to make collecting first party data in 2021 and beyond a priority. 52% of marketers said that they have prioritized digital experiences with the goal of collecting more first party data. So that doesn't mean that you have to collect every data point on each of your customers in one, one interaction during one touch point. What you can do, do is you can deploy a strategy called progressive profiling. And this is something that again, hopefully you can take back you know, to your teams and your, your agency partners. Um, but basically that means the data can be collected progressively over time, over multiple touch points. And you can basically use each of those touch points to provide you with more data on each of your customers, further building out that customer profile over time. And so some of those touch points uh, may be what you see here on the screen. So when somebody um, interacts, a patient or a physician interacts with your website, or if you have any apps that you're using, 
you can collect first party data uh, during those interactions. If you're doing CRM emails or text messages, when somebody clicks on a piece of content, you can capture that data point, pull it back into your database and align it with that customer's profile. Their social media use, their profiles or their activities, when you're doing social listening and things of that nature, you could pull through some of that data to build out the customer profile. And then finally, surveys, customer feedback, you know, maybe your rep is having conversations with people during speaker you know, meetings or entering in some of that information into Viva. Uh, maybe you have some surveys within your, your core sales aid or on your website that people are taking part in. You're going to want to make sure that you have a way to identify what customer is completing you know, those surveys so that you can then take his or her responses, pull that back you know, to your database and further build out that, that customer's profile. Again, this is a process that can be completed over time. So let's take a look you know, at what that might look like. Um, you know, the big thing is that first party data, it's gonna help you to drive those personalized experiences. So each interaction generates personal data. Um, if Dr. Smith used her mobile device, a mobile device to order samples from your website, you can pull that data through and then you can start to look at some of the contextual data with that. She used her mobile device. Maybe she's a mobile first customer. You wanna optimize those experiences for her for her mobile device. You also notice that she ordered samples, but you don't see any other prescribing data for Dr. Smith. So you might infer that she's potentially a new prescriber. So all of these contextual data points will allow you to figure out relevant content to create for Dr. Smith on her next touch point you now know what content she's more likely to engage with. You know, you're not gonna to wanna to send her information that is trying to convince her to prescribe. She's already there, she ordered samples. Maybe you wanna send her um, dosing information or patient profiling information, patient resources, because she's already told you that she's interested. She's just ordered samples from your website. So that'll enable you to create relevant content for Dr. Smith which will lead you to be able to create that personalized experience for her. And this is where that integrated team comes in. This way you can deliver the right message to Dr. Smith at the right time and through the right channel, which means she'll be more likely to engage in that personalized experience. And what happens once she engages? That interaction then generates more personal data. Right, so which then will drive relevant content for the next touch point. And so you can see how you can progressively profile these physicians and, and patients over time, continually collecting more data, which will allow you to further optimize and personalize the experiences that you deliver over time. We're, we, we're playing, you know, a big, big uh, thing that we hear a lot is, you know, short term, um, short term goals, and we want to show success. Well, we need to make sure that we're also looking at the longer term. And this is a process that will allow you to be successful both short term and long term with your brand. So this is the, the last slide on the first party data section of the presentation. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about the definitions, third party, first party. Um, we talked about why it's so important, you know, to, to invest. Again, collecting first party data is hard, but to invest in this um, for your brands. Uh, we talked about progressive profiling, so you don't have to feel overwhelmed that you have to collect all the data up, up front and at once. Uh, and then we've, sh we've showed you how that works, how that first party data will drive those personalized experiences, those personalized loops, so to speak, uh, for your brand. So with that, um, before we move on to the demo, uh, quick demo of StorySoft, Again, trying to make this as practical as we can for, for everybody who's attending today. Uh, we did create a short checklist that I wanted to take you through um, very quickly. So hopefully you all can see my screen. So this is a checklist that we created. As you can see over on the left-hand side, We've broken it down uh, by each of the three areas that we talked about today. And then we have some items over on the right within each of those section, sections so that when you are creating your next you know, project, you're working together with your agency team, you can kind of just go through the list. 
and make sure that you're including all of these elements or the right elements based on you know, what you're looking to achieve. Um, so if you're interested in this, uh, this checklist to take this back you know, to your brand teams and your agency partners, uh, please just shoot me an email you know, after, the, uh, after the session and I'm happy to, to send it off to you. Uh, my email is ryan at storysoft.io. Uh, but that, that email address will be up on the screen uh, during the Q&A section. So just shoot me an email. We'll get this over to you uh, so that you can use it as you, as you move forward this year and next. Uh, and so now what we'll do is we'll jump back into the deck. What we want to do next is give you a quick demo of StorySoft because, again, it combines all three of the elements that we just talked about into a single solution. Um, and it enables marketers to deliver uh, personalized digital experiences to both HCPs and patients. And on the back end, we're able to collect first party customer level data and transfer that data back to your omni-channel database. As we go through here again, if you have any questions, um, about anything we've covered previously or that we're about to cover, you know, please just submit them in and we'll cover, uh, we'll cover those questions here in just a few moments. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's our mission at StorySoft to help brands tell breakthrough digital stories at scale. And that's why we created an entire marketing platform built around the idea of storytelling. So that platform consists of three core components. We have a, a framework and a set of tools that allow us to take in approved brand assets and create these digital stories very quickly. We've integrated different marketing technology that allows us to publish these stories to a URL and host these stories on behalf of our customers. And then we've wrapped an entire analytics layer around these experiences so that you can understand how people are moving through the content, what they're interested in, what actions they're taking, and even where they're dropping off in the experience, so that you can use those insights to optimize the content over time and increase the effectiveness. So with that, I'm actually gonna show you an example story uh, because I really think that it'll help bring it to life for you all. Okay, so hopefully you can all see my screen. It says, Dr. Smith, help patients rethink what's possible. Um, and I am mimicking the mobile view of what a story looks like for us. On desktop, um, though the only difference is you're gonna navigate with, there's gonna be some left and right arrows that you'll navigate through the story. Where on mobile, it's a swipe. And I'll show you uh, what I mean by that. So um, the first thing I wanna hit is that there's a progress bar along the top. Um, so you know, you're on page one of eight. So you'll always know where you're at within a story at any given time. Um, hopefully this story actually feels familiar to you. If you know Instagram stories, um, it may feel familiar. We've designed that purposely, but we've added all of those core elements that we talked about, the personalization, the ability to capture first party data, the interactivity, the compliance features, right? Everything we talked about the digital storytelling um, section has been added into this platform to create a truly immersive experience that marketers can de deploy to both patients and physicians. Um, so up at the top, you'll see it's hosted on a URL as we talked about. Why that's important, it means that it's extremely flexible. So you can create the content once and share it across any marketing channel because it's hosted on a URL. You know, we always talk about um, how much time, money, and effort that marketers, you know, have to spend to create a tactic that only gets deployed through one channel. Think about, you know, your, your CLM presentations from Viva. You know, you, you build these presentations and you only have the rep to be able to deliver it through uh, to the physician. Imagine being able to create an immersive experience 
and then share it out through email, text messaging, QR codes, right? So send an email out instead of five paragraphs of text, it's a, a sentence of text with a link to one of these stories. Physician opens the email, clicks the link, lands in one of these experiences. Um, instead of running ads, social ads, SEM ads, display ads, and driving people to a static landing page, drive them to one of these, emo these immersive experiences. They click the ad, they land in the story. Put QR codes on a poster, a print piece on your speaker decks, scan the code, open up the experience. So because it's a hosted solution, it allows you to distribute that content out through multiple channels. Um, so you'll see that there's a video playing in the background. We can use any sort of media asset within these experiences to bring the content to life. We can have video in here, imagery. We can have audio, um, voiceover or music, animations, survey questions, and of course, your, your key messages. So we're combining all of those elements to create these immersive experiences. The other thing that I'll mention is that it's personalized to Dr. Smith. Um, so this is a very basic form of personalization. We're just pulling through that last name variable as we talked about. Um, and you know, so we can hook into any backend database that you're running and we can pull through any variables that you want uh, from the, the data that you have on your customers. And we can use those uh, data points to drive relevant content. Could be something basic as Dear Dr. Smith, or it could be that when Dr. Smith gets to page three of this story, she sees something different than Dr. Jones because of, a, you know, we know that Dr. Smith is a current prescriber and Dr. Jones is not. And so we want to show a different page of the story. All of that is possible within this platform. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swipe through the story. And so uh, before I do that, I want to explain that these are our story soft stories are linear experiences. So people will swipe through them page by page, very similar to flipping through pages in a book. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. We can have audio voiceover in here. I'm so lost. It's like a constant funk that I'm in. I don't sleep. I can't eat. And I'm unable to focus at work. Things are spiraling. So we're talking about, we're setting up the problem, adults suffering from uh, depression. And this is focused on HCPs. <clears throat> this is an HCP story. So I should have uh, said that up front. Um, maybe we get into some prevalence data that the HCP can click through. We can have dynamic charts and graphs in here. And everything that you see that I'm doing in here, we can track on the back and report that engagement back to you. And I'll show you the analytics here in a second. The other thing I want to call out is you'll see this bar at the bottom. It says full prescribing information and references. So this is a dynamic bar um, that we can display based on the needs of the, each page. If you have messages that require references, we can have a reference button down here. You click it, opens up the references, just pops it up. One click out to full prescribing information. So you know, it opens up your PDF, MLR really loves this. So all of those um, compliance features are all integrated within the platform. So now we've set up the problem adults suffering from depression. Now we're paying it off with uh, a product of the solution, which is this brand we've created called New Life. And as you see, now that we've introduced the brand, now we have our ISI. So kind of the peak over ISI, you can expand it. MLR likes this because it's very comfortable for them. They're used to it. Dr. Smith, in multiple studies, patients taking New Life 50 milligram tablets once daily saw significantly improved outcomes compared to placebo. Tap the bar chart for each study to reveal more data. So we know rep access is declining. Imagine being able to deliver an experience like this that a physician can go through on her own time, on her own device, but then using tools like audio to mimic a rep, just like a rep would call out key data when they're, they're in a sales presentation on a specific page. Now we can use voiceover to mimic that experience in a completely virtual environment. We can have sliders in here, slide to reveal more information. So as you can see, we're using a combination of storytelling techniques and interactivity to really get people immersed in the content. We can have survey questions in here. So this is asking Dr. Smith, you know, where New Life falls in her treatment of the adults with depression. Maybe Dr. Smith says she's a current prescriber and hit submit. Every story ends with a call to action. We're on page eight of eight, and this is the call to action for Dr. Smith. It says, download a patient starter kit. 
Maybe this is a PDF or a link to your resources portal, but it makes sense for Dr. Smith because she has patients. She's a current prescriber. Let's get her started. Here. But maybe Dr. Jones is coming through here and she says, well, you know what? You've convinced me. I'm willing to try it. We can dynamically, so this is that idea of action-based personalization. We can dynamically change the content that, the, that Dr. Jones sees to order samples because if she's willing to try it, let's get some samples into her hand. But maybe Dr. Thomas is coming through and saying, you know what, guys, I'm still on the fence. I need more information. Great. Request a rep call. So we can dynamically change future content within one of these stories based on any action somebody takes previously within that story. So that concludes the demo of the, of the front end. And again, any questions, please just go ahead and submit them and we'll answer them here in just a few minutes. I wanna show you the back end data, the back end reporting portal um, because it's super powerful. Every uh, brand that works with us gets a, a login to uh, our reporting portal. And um, imagine that this is, these are all the different stories that you're telling with StorySoft. And you wanna come in and you wanna look at the, the reports for the story we just went through, that new life story. You can simply click on the report, uh, open it up, and this is going to dynamically uh, share all the real-time information. Along the left are all the different reports that we have. So we're in the summary report right now, and this talks about participants. A participant in our world is anybody who comes to the story and takes one additional action, uh, swipes to page two, clicks on something. That's a participant. They're signaling that they're interested. That's who we care about. That's who we want to follow and report on is their behavior. We can share with you um, how much time they're spending. And then this is a breakdown of participants over time. Up here, we have multiple filters where you can filter this data by date. Uh, you can see it for the last seven days, the last month, and it'll all dynamically change. The other thing I mentioned is that we can push these out through multiple channels. Well, on the back end, we can set each of these channels up in our system, and then you can actually cut the data up by the channel. Maybe you want to see how many people are coming in from a, web, a story that's embedded in your website versus how many people are coming in from an outbound email. You can, you can change uh, the view and filter the data by channel and by device, mobile and desktop. Our next report is our retention report. So very simple report, but super powerful. So this tells you how many participants and then how many of those people went through the entire experience. So because these are linear, if somebody completed the whole thing, that means we know they were exposed to every single one of the messages on each of those pages. So we can per, uh, give you a percentage of how many people are completing it and also how many pages on average are they going through. In this retention report, these are all the pages along the bottom. So that's each page of the story that we went through earlier. And this shows you the drop off. So imagine this report, if it showed you that it went from 98% to 70% from page two to three. And then most of the people that got through page three went on to complete the whole thing. That would help you identify the gap in your story and pinpoint that you want to look at the content and the messaging on page two. Maybe you want to change the message. Maybe you want to change the media asset you're using to see if you can get more people past page two um, and bolster that story over time. So this is a really great report to help you identify, again, the gaps in your story. We also have our performance report. So every story gets an engagement score, good, average, poor. It's a unique algorithm we've created based on activity, uh, what they're clicking on, how many, how many pages they went through, how long they're spending. So this gives you a, a snapshot of how your story is performing. Uh, how many people are hitting the button at the end, the CTA page, the call to action page? How many people are clicking through to take that next action? We also have the ability for people to share it and favorite it. So we track how many people are actually taking advantage of that. And then this is a breakdown of all the different engagement elements. So if you remember, we saw issue one, two, and three. We had the slider, we had the voiceovers. All of this basically shows you which of your, which of those elements are getting the most interactivity. Maybe you wanna use those on future stories. We can then break all of this information down by page. So along the left, these are all of our pages. And now you can start to see where people are spending their time. What messages are resonating most with those people? And then you can click through on see details to see, well, what are they doing on that page? What are they clicking on? So again, you can start to understand what messages are performing well with each, you know, with your audience. Uh, we can also show you where people are coming in from at a high level, which channels. Uh, maybe you're sharing on LinkedIn or Twitter. Maybe you're running ads to it, emails, text messages. We can show you what's driving the most traffic. We can break it down by device, mobile or desktop. 
And if you have survey questions in here, we can show you the results of those survey responses. Um, so I uh, just want to give you a quick kind of overview of the analytics portal. Hopefully that was helpful. As you can see, a lot of rich uh, behavioral data that we can provide back to you. And again, imagine being able to, to, to get this data at the customer level, knowing what Dr. Smith clicked on, how far she went in the story, how much time she was spending, and then taking that customer level data and sending it back to your omnichannel database so that we can start that loop. That is all possible within the StorySoft platform. So again, please submit any questions that you might have, because um, now we're going to jump into uh, the Q&A section of our presentation. We have a few minutes left. All right. So hopefully you all can see my screen. You know, thank you so much for attending. Uh, again, if you wanted to get that document, uh, the checklist that we created, please, you know, just, uh, just shoot me an email. You see my email there, ryan at storiesoft.io. Um, happy, to, happy to shoot you that or even the deck if you, if you need it. So, so with that, um, I see a couple of questions, not, not a ton. Um, we're just gonna jump into, uh, jump into these and uh, answer your question. So the first one is, uh, does the story campaign live on its own website or on the company's uh, brand website? So great question. And the answer is it can live on either or both. So um, standard story, we will publish it to one of our URLs and we'll host it. And then you can, we'll basically work with your agency partners they'll create the drivers, right? They'll create your ads or your emails, uh, wherever you want to, whatever tactics you want to use to drive traffic to the story. So we'll host that, that story for you. But uh, we actually recently uh, pushed out a brand new feature that allows you to actually embed stories into brand.com or any website. So you can actually just embed it like you would embed a YouTube video right in your brand website and you can capitalize on that constant flow of traffic that's already coming to your, your, uh, your website to get them engaged in the story. And then the last thing I'll say is if you wanted to, or if your organization required it, which we haven't run, in, run into, but if they required that you host all of your content, we can, through our API, we can enable you um, to host it yourselves, but we can still capture all of the analytics and report that back to you. So um, the, the, the big thing that to remember is it's flexible. You know, whatever you need uh, from the platform in terms of that, we can accommodate. Um, another question was just, uh, can I get a copy of the demo? Uh, absolutely, we, will, um, we'll, we can send that out to you. Again, you can ping me for the person who asked this, you know, I'll remember and I'll, I'll shoot that to you um, afterwards. But if anybody else wants, a uh, copy of the New Life demo, the link, uh, please just, just shoot me an email um, and I'll get that over to you. So, um, you know, with that, that was actually the only questions that we had, um, you know, and so if, if what I'll say is if anything hits you after the conversation, find me on LinkedIn, shoot me an email, happy to answer any additional questions, um, you know, about anything we covered here today, StorySoft specifically, how it's being used within, you know, the industry, uh, please, you know, just uh, just let me know. But with that, uh, again, I know you're all so busy. Really, really appreciate um, you joining us today. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, again, ping me, LinkedIn, uh, email. You know, hopefully this this uh, was informative and gave you something to to take back to your teams uh, for 2022 brand planning. So thank you so much, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.